Hello and welcome to part two of my Beginner's DaVinci Resolve tutorials. In part two we're going to be talking about more advanced edits, utilizing and syncing audio, and getting into some basic transitions. If you haven't seen part one, you should go check it out and then pop back into this video. The link to that video is in the description down below. Before we get into this, I want to let you know that I'm going to be answering every single question I get in the comments section. So if you have any questions, if you're having some trouble following along at any point, feel free to rewind the video, watch it again, feel free to ask me a question, because like I said, I'm going to answer it. Real quick, to get started, we're just going to go into a little bit of a refresher, how to do cuts, how to move things around, and how to navigate in your timeline. So I'm going to drag this clip down into my timeline to get it in there. And as you can see, some legs, some water, some rope, some sky. So in order to make a cut here, you're going to get your blade tool, hotkey B, or you can go ahead and click on the blade tool right here. You're going to find a spot in your clip where you want it to be cut. So we're going to go right before it goes into the sky here, like right as it's moving away from the legs and the feet. We're going to make a cut. Then we're going to grab our selection tool to move things around. If you have a clip selected and you hold shift, you'll be able to only slide it vertically. So if you don't want something to move side to side at all, you just hold shift, slide that up, and it's gonna go straight up. In order to move around in your timeline, you're gonna be using this slider bar down here, this minus and plus sign here to zoom in and zoom out on your timeline, or you can go ahead and use your middle mouse button, click it, and then you can drag around to where you wanna be in your timeline, up, down, left, right, Wherever you want to go, you can use your middle mouse button to get there. So now that our refresher is done, we're going to get into a couple of basic transitions that you can do on top of your cuts here. So one of the most basic transitions, and one that is actually over here in your video transitions toolbox, if you don't see this over here, go ahead and click on effects library up top, and then you'll get your toolbox up. So if you want to be able to make your own cross dissolve right here, all you're going to do is drag this up and then a little bit over, we're gonna turn off snapping so we can just move it just a touch. We're gonna to move it just a little bit over. We're gonna go ahead and grab on this little tab up here, this little flag thing. We're gonna to go to the end of this next clip and we're gonna drag this one to the beginning of this clip and then if we watch that transition, it's gonna do a cross dissolve for us. And that's a nice way to transition from scene to scene. It's a very smooth cut. You don't get that harsh cut that you would get otherwise. If you don't want to go directly into the next clip and you want it to go to black first, you go ahead and fade it like this next to each other because then they're not layering. It's going to use your background color instead of that clip. So we're going to go ahead and watch this. Fades to black, fades in to the feet. We are going to leave it up top for now, just like that, so we get that smooth transition there. And then I'm going to show you a little bit of how to use them over here, these pre-made ones, and add those to your clips. So I'm going to go ahead and drag a new clip down here. I'm going to check this one out. Let's see what it looks like. You got some underwater footage. Very cool. So we're going to go ahead and cut that where we want it to be cut. I'm not really going to look through this one too much. I'm just going to be using this for example, so I'm not going to go through too carefully and figure out where we want our cuts to be. So we're going to go ahead and cut this into a couple different pieces here. I'm going to go ahead and slide down with my middle mouse button, and I'm going to get rid of this with the backspace key. I'm going to drag these together. I do have snapping turned on, so you'll see that they snap together when they get close, and then there's no space between those. There's no blank space. If you don't have snapping on, you might accidentally leave it a little bit off, and then it goes to black before it goes in your next clip. So I'd recommend if you're trying to bump things up together, use snapping. It'll help. Hotkey for snapping is N. So if we watch this clip in the transition here, it's just going to be a hard cut. Boom. Hard cut. And you can see where that happens. It's not smooth. It's, you know, it's a hard cut. So we have all of these different dissolves over here, a bunch of different iris transitions and some motion transitions as well as shape transitions and wipe transitions. I'm not going to go through every single one of these, I'm going to pick one from each of these different categories because they all kind of work similarly. 
and you'll be able to play with them on your own once you see kind of what they do and how to add them to your clips. So up here we're going to do a blur dissolve because we've already made our own cross dissolve a little bit earlier. We're going to go ahead and drag that between these two clips. You'll see a little white bar. It's kind of clear. When that goes between two clips like this, we'll zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. When this goes between two clips, it will affect both clips. So if we go back a couple of frames with our arrow keys and then hit play with our space bar, you'll see that it does a nice blur transition. It's smooth, it's not jarring, it makes videos easier to watch. So if you click on this so that it's highlighted red, you can delete it with the backspace key and then we'll get an iris transition. So we are going to do the eye iris. Just pop that in between there, just like the dissolve. We're gonna go ahead and hit play. And then the shape of an eye. So an iris is gonna give you a transition in whatever shape you choose over here, onto your footage, and then into the next one. In an upcoming video, I'm gonna show you how you can make these on your own. <clears throat> In an upcoming video, I'm going to show you how you can make these on your own so that you don't have to use their pre-made irises. So if you want to do text or something like that, you want to watch that next video. But that's an iris, so we're going to click on that, get it deleted, go into motion, we're going to do the slide. Pop that between them. I bet you know what's going to happen. It's going to slide into the next clip. Easy as that. We're going to use the heart just for fun here back up a couple of frames, hit play, and you'll see that it looks a lot like the iris. But these are just more like fun shapes than you can find up in the iris category. So we're gonna go ahead and delete that transition. Then we'll get into the wipes. We're gonna do a clock wipe because I think it shows very well what's going on with the wipes. So we're gonna back up a couple of frames, check that out. So it's just going to wipe across the screen in some sort of direction. These I'm also going to show you how to make in an upcoming video so that you don't have to be limited to their pre-made wipes. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. So if you wanted to get real crazy with this, you could go ahead and make a bunch of cuts in here, get rid of some stuff. We're going to give this one the old ripple delete, so shift backspace, so that it closes up that gap. And then we are going to put in a blur dissolve here. We're gonna make another cut over here. And then here, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this middle space. And then we'll put in an arrow iris. You can do really whatever you wanna do with these things. It's just there to help you make your transitions smoother so that your video isn't jarring to the viewer. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. You're going to see that blur dissolve again. It's going to go through. You're going to get to the arrow iris into a new scene. So those are how you... So that's a couple examples of how you can use these. It's just a transition between scenes, between clips, to make your videos better. So now that you know how to use the transitions built into DaVinci Resolve, we are going to go ahead and get into some audio work here because audio is an incredibly important part of video. So, here we have a clip with a person jumping into the water with some sound under it. If we take that sound by unlinking these clips like we learned in the last video, Control alt l and then clicking on only the sound so that only the sound is highlighted, we're gonna go ahead and cut out that splash and then we're going to get rid of the sound around it. And we can move that splash wherever we want. So if we wanted to move it so that it's out of sync, we'll just go ahead and do that real quick. So you'll see the jump. And then the splash happens slightly after he jumps in, or we can move it before. Hear the splash, see the jump with no sound. So you can do that with these sounds from your clip, but generally I like to leave these synced up. So you'll find a moment like where he hits the water. Again, you're just gonna be popping through your frames with your arrow keys. And then we're gonna go ahead and move that splash so that it happens right when he's starting to splash in the water there. And then it should sync up nicely. So you see him hit the water, splash goes, and you can do this with any kind of sound. It doesn't necessarily have to be from your clip. You can import sounds the same way you import clips. 
So I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple of sounds so that we can add them into this footage. Alright, so I grabbed a ding sound effect, which we're going to put underneath our splash, just so that we can see how this works. Not that you would put a ding with a splash ever, really, but just for an example, here you go. You can see him jumping into the water here, ding, right when he hits it. So that's kind of, so that's one way you can use it. We'll go ahead and move that ding over just for a further example. As soon as he breaks through that water, we're gonna put a ding in so that it dings when he comes out. Jumps in, splash sound, he's down there still. He's gonna pop out, ding, there he is. We're good to go. We'll go ahead and throw a music track underneath there, underneath all of this. Music tracks, generally when you get them from the internet, are gonna be pretty loud. They're gonna be mixed pretty high. So we're gonna get into some volume changing and level changing right now. So if we move back, we're gonna be able to hear this music. And it's gonna be quiet because it's just getting started. And if we want that to sync up with the splash, we're gonna go ahead and cut it. We're gonna delete that beginning part. We're gonna get our selection tool. We're gonna move it back just a touch so that the beginning here of the of the action so the beginning here of the actual music syncs up with that splash so they start at the same time. So we're gonna go ahead and play. So you can see that was a little bit early. So I'm gonna turn off snapping, move it just a smidge forward, and then we're gonna go ahead and hit play again. Check that out. You can see how the music goes with that splash now. It's as easy as that to add a music track in, and if you have audio of people speaking, you're probably gonna wanna turn this down a little bit. So you're either gonna click on the entire channel over here, audio three or two or one, whichever one you wanna be fiddling with. You're gonna grab that, and then you can change the track level, which this is your audio track right here. This is your audio channel. So audio three, this is the track. We're gonna go ahead and turn that down and then it will be significantly quieter. I'm going to turn it up so you can hear everything together, but you should be able to hear the splash over the music pretty significantly. So as you can see there, the music is very quiet. If we wanted to boost that up so it was super loud over top of all the other sounds, go ahead and turn that volume up. We're going to watch it again. So that's how you change audio levels for your tracks. You can choose individual clips where you can change the volume in them or you can choose whole channels just like that. If you wanted to take an individual clip like this, you can also change its pan, which is which speaker it comes out of. So if you want it to sound like somebody's talking on the right side versus talking on the left side, you can adjust that pan a little bit. And some nice things that you can do with your sound here is come over into your toolbox again Go down into your Audio FX, Fairlight FX, and then go ahead and find the Multiband Compressor. What compressors do is take your very loud sounds, bring them down, and take your very quiet sounds and bring them up so that everything is at a pretty consistent volume throughout your video. And that's very good to do because then people won't have to ride that volume button throughout your video. They're not going to be like, okay, I got to turn it up now because it's quiet or okay, well now I have to turn it down because it's super loud. It's going to do that automatically for you, which is super nice. You also have noise reduction. So if you have a lot of static in the background of your sound, you just drop noise reduction on there. I like to do auto speech mode just because it's the easiest, fastest, and it works very well. Go ahead and click on auto speech mode and then that's ready to go. You're just gonna close that down and then this will be, oops, I gotta turn that back down. You turn that back down. And then this will have a lot of the noise taken out of it. You also, you can play around with these depending on what you need. If you've got a lot of sharp S sounds, you can use the de -esser. If you've got like an air conditioner humming in the background, you can take out the de-hum. You can do distortion, echo, really whatever you need out of here. Vocal channel will boost up vocals. 
stereo fixer. If you have something that's only coming out of one headphone, you can use stereo fixer to fix that so that it's coming out of both of them. Super easy to do. You just drag and drop mostly. And then there is one more way to change the volume on a clip kind of on the fly without dealing with anything up here in your inspector panel. And that is while the video is paused, you go ahead and grab this little thin line right here and you can drag it down to make everything quieter or you can drag it up to make everything louder. So that does the same thing as these sliders up here, but it's a little bit of a quicker way to do it while being slightly less precise. Now earlier I mentioned that we would be learning how to create our own irises and our own shape transitions in a next video. So if you want to see that video, it is on screen right now. You can go ahead and click on that or there's a link in the description down below once the video releases. So if you learned anything from this video, make sure to leave it a like. If you don't want to miss any episodes in this beginner tutorial series, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you see them right when they come out. And I'll see you guys in the next video.